Tela 
in the chairs. Somebody give Jesus a big clap. come and give us a peace. Let's pray that God will minister unto us. Let's be praying there. The people at the far back, please come in. They are starting to sing now. Our ushers, all the people at the back, bring them in. Once you are to and to the the people with the deep uh, on my right hand here. All those people with testimonies, please come over here. We are going to have wonderful testimonies today. Come quickly, whatever God did on the first day, the second day, we want to hear what God was able to do in your life. Take a walk of faith, come here, we we'll come and interview.
chikoni chifundo anatipasa pota ya moyo pa mtandapo chiumbolo chinaza kwa opinjidwa chipulumo so chaule Ah, you are not so loud, eh? Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Tell your neighbor that this is my day. Strongly tell your neighbor I'm getting my portion today. Okay, we are going to listen to a powerful testimony. After that powerful testimony, I'll call for the National Outreach Chairperson to come and invite the pastor for this evening's ministration. So we are calling upon Sister Ivoni Kapembwa to come and testify. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. My name is Sister Yvonne Kapembwa. I would like to test the glory of God for what he did for us through our pastor. Twenty. At Wanagukala Mubanja and it too, Banalo Mbanja Mutaka twenty thirteen. And by the grace of God, much so much Amongo. Niposo Anakala and you one and it were bam twenty fourteen. After that, Babuya Pake, I had two miscarriages. Wanapita Macha Bay. One after the other. 
After the second miscarriage, I was told to go for a scan. And they found that I had a uterine fibroid. I was given some antibiotics. I was given some antibiotics. And then I was told that uh, if I was lucky, the fibroid would reduce. If not, I needed to go for an operation. After the treatment, I got pregnant. And when I went for the first scan, the fibroid was there and it was five times bigger than the embryo. Fear came upon me. Fear came upon me. So I decided to go and see the pastor. So he prayed for me. The pregnancy grew and the baby was born. We named him Ephraim. We named him Ephraim, and then after that, I had two more other children. I never went for any surgery to remove the fibroid. Jesus Christ gave me all these children. Yes, and I never Lord. had any miscarriage after that prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So these are the children. So this was the first one. And then after the prayer, I had these other three. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me have a big hallelujah. Another big hallelujah. I told you that today is today. And today's miracles will be for every one of us in here. You remember when we were praying, huh? We said the people we have invited must get a miracle. And the members of the church must get a miracle. You are getting your portion tonight in Jesus' name. Give me a bigger amen. Amen. It's now my pleasure to welcome the chairperson of the Lusaka and uh, our outreach to come and invite the national overseer. Thank you, sir. Bowling, bowling, hallelujah! Are you expecting a miracle? Are you expecting a blessing? Say, my blessing is coming. Tonight, tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Our sister has testified her own testimony. And the man of God is coming first to give you the first dose, the word of God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. That word of God will prepare your heart. And your miracle, your blessing tonight shall not bypass you in Jesus' name. Without taking much of our time, may I have the honor of inviting our pastor, our national overseer for Deeper Christian Life Ministry, Zambia. Hallelujah. Shall we upstand as we welcome the man of God? You are welcome, sir. Let's get ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Atamantike ambuye. Praise the Lord. Atamantike ambuye. Are you expecting a miracle? Let's pray together. Let's pray together. 
Eternal God will come to you at this time. Ancient of days, we thank you. Praise you because you are the Almighty. You are able to do all things. Lord God Almighty, as we are here before you, I pray for everyone present here. Whatsoever their needs may be. Touch them at the point of need in Jesus' name. God Almighty, I pray. Nobody will go here without a provision. Nobody will go without their own portion. You are a loving God. You made all things available for us. That's why we have come unto you at this time. I pray that your blessing will follow your people. Any kind of destruction in any life. Jesus has conquered the destroyer already. And I believe by your mighty power you visit every individual. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Give me a better amen. All right. You may take your seats. Those who have seats to sit down. We go back to our passage, John chapter 10. I'm reading verse 10. Even if you don't have the Bible by now, you should know it by heart. It's your memory verse. John chapter 10, verse 10. Ah, verse 10. Verse 10. Verse 10. Verse 10. He said, The thief cometh not but for to steal. To kill, and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. We've seen the thief, what he does. Last night we talked about the killer, how he kills. Zulo. He kills through disobedience. Once he needs somebody to disobey God, then he's able to kill that person. Now, today, we want to look at the aspect of the destruction. But we want to deal with the destruction of the destroyer. This verse 10 says the devil comes to destroy. And Jesus Christ said, I've come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And when you are dealing with the destruction that the devil causes, Look at the book of Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah 14. Isaiah in chapter 14. Isaiah 14. We are reading from verse 12. He said, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? Wagwadi, kuchokela kumwamba, iwe. Tanda, mwana, wampanda kucha, wagwe sedwa pansi, iwe wolo, wole fula, amitundu. He says the devil is the one who weakens the nation. And we are made to understand. If you look at verse 13, he said, For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also, I will sit. Upon the mount of the congregation in the sight of the north. Ndipo iwe, unati mtima mwako, ndizakwera kumwamba, ndizakwe sampando wanga wachifumu, 
pamwamba panyenyezi sa mulungu ndi zakala pamwamba papirira kamu malekezero akumpoto in verse 15 pandimi ya 15 he said yet thou shall be brought down to hell koma uzasidwa kunsi kwa manda that's where the devil is going to ndiye kumene satana ali kumuka and that's the reason why he wants to deceive a number of people to go with him to hell ndiye chifacha afuna kunyengeza anta ambiri kuti amulondole apite ku gehena he will not deceive you in jesus name saza kunyengeza ni muzina la yesu you are not going to hell with the devil in Jesus name. He will go alone. So in the, in the, it says he is going to be sent down to hell. It says in verse 16. They that see thee. That's when our eyes will be opened to see all that the devil is doing now. At that time everybody will see him plainly. Iwo amene akuona iwe. Ana na kuti ndiye chifuka chache and all say azafunika kuti aone chiwonoke cha mterekezi. The seed will narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying is this the man that made the earth to tremble? That's what he's doing right now. Iwo amene akuona iwe azanga nisisa iwe na azalingalira za iwe ndikuti kodi uyu. Ndiyo mtu amene ana antutu mirisa ziko la pansi amene ana kwekezo mafumu Ndiyo amene aononga mafumu Is this the man that made the world a wilderness Ndiyo amene napanga sopano ziko kata chipululu That destroyed the cities thereof Amene anaononga mizionse That's what the devil does Ndiyo zimene mtirekeza machita Is the one that destroyed the cities he causes flood. He is the one who causes the famine. He is the one that causes shortages of essential commodities. You see, it's when we don't understand these things about the devil, we begin to blame this one, blame the other one, complain against this one, complain and criticize this one. This is the one who is causing all the destruction. Uzanga tifestiziva kuti ni satana mterekezi ama chita hizo timambo dandaula tipa samuna nduyu tipa samuna nduyu koma ni mterekezi. He is the one who is making the world like a wilderness. Ndiye amena mapangisa ziko kana chipululu. This is the one who is destroying the city. Ie ndiye amena maononga mizinda. You hear the fire broke out here consume and destroy buildings. Munamba kuna uti moto wapuka uko waononga nyumba. You hear that there is fire in this particular place not enough food. You hear that the flood has destroyed the field. This is the cause of it. The other time we went to Malawi and we saw the destruction that the flood caused. Somebody planted the whole field. Everything was swept away by floods. Who causes that kind of problem? The devil. He's the one who is making the world like a wilderness. God did not make this world a wilderness for all. He's the one that destroyed the cities. You look at the social ills in the city, he's the one who causes that. The drunkenness that brings catastrophe in families. This is the one causing The devil is destroying the cities. He does that by destroying the inhabitants thereof. He is the one destroying our cities. We are told that he does not open the door of his prisoners. 
He has locked a number of people in prison spiritually. And he doesn't open the door at all. He put them in the prison. Some of them are in the prison of alcohol. The person cannot do without drinking alcohol. And you get surprised because sometimes they start drinking early in the morning. And that's the method he uses to destroy the cities. How can a man who is drunk by 12 midday be productive at all? A student who is drinking alcohol, how can he pass exam? That's how he destroys our cities. He doesn't allow people to make use of their brain. You see, so it's not the politicians that cause the problem, actually. The person behind this all is the devil. You remember there is a time they used to sell that uh, to Jirijiri, eh? Children will be drunk in the classroom. Okay, so we said, oh, no, something must be done about this. What did they do? We ban to Jirijiri. Did it solve the problem? No. Find the children will go out, they will, they will even buy the one that is stronger than to Jirijiri. And they pour it inside a, a bottle of Coca-Cola. When they pour it inside Coca-Cola bottle, they mix it with Coca-Cola. You see them, they are, they are carrying a bottle of Coca-Cola. You think they are drinking Coca-Cola. It's only when they start to laugh, when there is nothing to laugh about, you know the person is drunk. So even if you make a law and you you ban to Jirijiri. They come up with another method. The reason is because the devil is behind it all. That's the method by which he destroys our cities. You can see it in this particular place. He the people in prison. He doesn't allow them to come out of the prison. Have you seen those ones who smoke cigarettes? Some of them are even smoking marijuana. They are inside the prison. You find others in the prison of prostitution. They are committing immorality. One man is not sufficient for the woman. The woman is married, he has another man somewhere. You only hear that no, they were caught committing adultery in a, a hotel. In the Lodge. That's a person who is in prison. The devil doesn't open that prison door. Some are bound by tobacco. Others are bound by witchcraft. Some people are bound by alcohol. There are some who are bound by this so-called marijuana. The devil does not open the door at all. And you go to some places. They said they play with witchcraft as if you are playing video game. Even little children, they are involved in it. 
hear of somebody saying if he's flying in the night mm -hmm. that he ran out of fuel and the person falls down in somebody's compound naked. Mwana huti mtu wina akuta kuruka ndi mafuta mafuta au fit ndi popo popo pata kwa the devil. Is in his chito zam terekezi. They under the bondage of the devil. Ali munde nde wa terekezi. The devil doesn't open the door of his prisoner. Satan asafu na kusegula. We thank God the destroyer has been destroyed. Jesus Christ came into this world. And he came to do something. What he came to do to destroy the works of the devil. Look at that book of Hebrews chapter 2. In Hebrews chapter 2, we are reading from verse 14. It says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. He himself also likewise took part of the same. That through death he might destroy him that has the power of death, that is the devil. And, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. That's what Jesus came to do. He came to destroy the works of the devil. And not only the works of the devil in the lives of people, destroy the devil himself. Jesus Christ called him a destroyer in John chapter 10 verse 10. Yesu mwine amucha iye wakuononga muma chapter 10. You can see in this particular place Jesus through death destroyed the destroyer. Mwona maroya ano Yesu Christu so through death, he has destroyed him who has the power of death. That's, that's the greatest thing human beings fear. They are afraid of death. And as a result of that, you find people living their lives in fear. So, through fear of death, Jesus Christ decided. Yes, Christo, we must come and destroy this person who has this weapon. And that's why he came into this particular world. He identified with you. He identified with me. He took upon him flesh and blood. So that he would be like, like us. Yet without sin. Then on the cross of Calvary. He died there to destroy all the works of the devil. And not only that, he also destroyed the weapon of the devil. And he defeated the devil completely. He destroyed him who has the power of death. Normally when people get sick, what they are afraid of, I hope I don't die because of this sickness. The moment you hear that somebody is sick, and the sickness has been for a long time, Everybody is afraid. I hope this person doesn't die. If you are sick in this particular place, I'm here to tell you you are not dying. You will live in Jesus' name. So the power of death, the possession of that weapon in the hands of the devil, just makes people afraid. And as a result of them being afraid, God decided that Jesus should come and destroy him who has the power of death. So, the devil has been destroyed. 
Satan to enable us to have our inheritance back. Very quickly, we are going to consider three things now and then we pray. Number one, we'll be looking at the promise and the provision of our inheritance in Christ. So, the Lord himself Mungu makes some provision for us. And all of those provisions that the devil is sitting on, all of them are still available for you through Christ Jesus. And you are going to get your own portion, Jesus. So, there's the, pro the promise and the provision of our inheritance in Christ. But there is a problem. That will take us to the second thing. That's the part of preventing our inheritance in Christ. There's only one thing that makes us not to get that inheritance. And we will look at that part, and the devil uses it very often. Then we are going to close up with possessing our inheritance in Christ. And this night you will get your own portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give me an amen of Bauli. God bless you. Number one. The provision, the promise. God made a provision, so He made a promise for all. In 2 Peter chapter 1, we are reading verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 3. It says, According as His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to begin to think of what you need. What is it that you are in need of? It has already been provided for. So, he said, according as his divine power has given to us. That's why I say you will take your own portion and you will go. Because it has already been provided for. It has also been given to you. To come and get your own. It's, and we only get that through the knowledge of Christ. So that's what we are saying, our inheritance through Christ. The moment you come to Christ, the inheritance is already provided. Because the thief, the devil, has taken it away, but Christ has come to give it back to us. So for, for you to be able to get it, in verse 4 it says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by this we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through laws. Do you get what he's talking about there? God made a provision through Christ. He also gave promises in the word of God. The promises are to take us to the provision. And God has done all of that for us. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. Hmm? 
Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. So the inheritance of the saints, the moment you get saved, there are inheritance available for you. As long as you walk in the life, that inheritance is made for you. If you remember Second Peter where we read in chapter 1 verse 4, the, the moment you have the corruption that is in the world, then you are having access to the provisions of God. Again, in this particular place, he's saying, this inheritance of the saints is in the light. So, those who walk in darkness, they can't get it. The people who are living in darkness, practicing witchcraft, walking in darkness, doing the works of darkness, telling lies and they are stealing. Those are works of darkness. Those who are into corruption, they pollute and pervert other people. Except they escape that corruption, they will not get into the inheritance. Ephesians in chapter 1. Look at verse 11. Ephesians 1, verse 11. He said, in whom we have obtained an inheritance, being destinated according to the purpose of him, who walketh all things after the counsel of his will. So it's very obvious. There. there is inheritance made available for all. In Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews in chapter 9. He tells us in verse 15. Our inheritance is in Christ. In verse 15 he says. Pandemia 15. He said, and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Ndipo mwaichi ya linkoswe ya chipanga no chaso pano kote okuti popeza kuda achitika infa ya kuombo la zola kwa zapa chipanga no choya amba oita niduao akala ndiro nchezano la zolo wa zosa. So when Jesus Christ is calling us, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. When he calls you like that, and you respond to that call, so all those people who are called, they are coming into eternal inheritance. So Jesus Christ has made the provision. Through death, he defeated the devil. He destroyed the power of death. He destroyed the devil on the cross of Calvary. And he has made available for us eternal inheritance. The inheritance is for the saints. The inheritance is for those who are saved. The moment you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you become a partaker of that inheritance. All you need to do is to come and get your own portion. The provision covers every area of your life. Prosperity Kutukuka. available for you. Zilipo kwa iwe. Protection Chitetezo. available for Chilipo you. Kwa iwe. And progress available for you. Chilipo 
All the provision you will ever need. God has made them available. That's what he's calling the inheritance. Salvation is an inheritance. Sanctification is an inheritance. Healing is an inheritance. All those inheritances are available for us. Whatsoever you are in need of. Christ has redeemed us already. He has made that inheritance to be available for all. That takes me to the second thing. The problem is this. This is the part that prevents us from getting our inheritance. we look at the part to preventing our inheritance. Our inheritance in Christ. This is the only thing that prevents people from getting it. Look at Jeremiah chapter 5. In Jeremiah chapter 5, we are reading from verse 25. Jeremiah 5, verse 25. 25. It says in verse 25, 25. It says, Your iniquities have turned the way these things, Puru, and your sin have withholding good things from you. That's where the problem lies. Iniquity turns away good things. Puru, puru, chosa, sin withholds good things. It makes you not know. Get what you are supposed to get. It stops your inheritance from coming to you. Look at Isaiah 59. In verse 1. He said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither his ears heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquity have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. That's the problem. You get what he's talking about here? You pray and no answer. But this night we are going to change that. God will answer your prayer this night in Jesus' name. But see, there are a lot of people who pray, 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 no answer. He said, iniquity have turned the face of God away. And you have a lot of people like that, eh? In this our good, blessed Christian nation, it's a Christian nation, tomorrow morning, come out by 8.30, 9 o'clock. Come and see people trooping to church. Going to worship they don't go late. But iniquity prevents them from getting into the inheritance in Christ. They go to worship God. They go to practice witchcraft. Any problem in their life, they are going to the witch doctor. On Sunday morning, they are going to church. So, go to church. Worship idols. You find the people who are wearing uniform. I'm not talking of this. The <laughs> are are you, you know people who have church uniform. With their church uniform. They like that and they are going to drinking places. They are carrying Bible and uh, they are going to brothels. It, it reminds me of one time some people drunk. They were drunk. 
ani chini kumbusa siku lina mtu wina anali wolezera so they caught a man of god anamugira mtu wa mulungu that man of god and they were Giving him, they were coming to my office. Ana rumu kugusa uyu mtu kumpeleza kum office yanga. And that was Sunday in the afternoon. Nipo somna ni masana. They themselves they were drunk. Iwa waka na da kumwa. They knew they were doing was wrong. Ana kuzwa zoma kuchita avanzola kuika. So I, I was hearing a sound. No, let's go to the pastor. He will tell us the truth. An nina ni kumvama na tien tien te kwa busa zatu zachona. And they were shouting on top of their voice. Ana ni kufula pama wao. I was wondering what could be going on. Na ruda ba ziti kanzota. So I decided to come out. Ma ichi na panga sa kuturu kapa. So I saw they were dragging a man of God. Na una tadi kukuku zamuntu wamuru ungu di Bible. And they they ask me. Ni ba nani fun? Is it good for him to come to a drinking place, to the bar, with the Bible? He said, uh, Pastor, don't mind them. I, I went there to buy Coca-Cola. Then they shouted on top of their voice. Nobody said, there was a supermarket there. Why didn't you go to buy Coca-Cola in the supermarket? You came into the, into the bar with a Bible. Those people knew that drinking alcohol was bad. They are now defending the Bible, saying, No, a person who goes to church shouldn't come to where they drink alcohol. In their opinion, even if you want to buy water, you shouldn't come and buy it in. Go to the supermarket. So, it's not that people do not know the right thing. The problem is they do not have the power to overcome the evil. And that's the thing that make the prayer of people not to be answered. How do you carry the Holy Bible and go into a bar? That's what they were questioning. They themselves who were drinking alcohol, they knew it was bad. What they are saying is that you cannot, you are holding Bible and you are coming to drinking places. There are some people like that. They go to church, they go to drink alcohol. They go to church, they go to commit immorality. They are worshiping God and they have gay friends, they have men friends. They are practicing witchcraft. They are going to church. In fact, some of them even bewitch one another in order to get position in church. They practice witchcraft and they are going to church. They go to church, they pray, and that's why the prayers are not being answered. And say, where he is faced from there. They practice pornography, they practice perversion. The pollution through pornography doesn't leave them alone, and they pray to God. They do all kinds of things. Is it stealing? They steal. They don't care. At the same time, they go to church. Then they pray to God. They disobey God and they want God to obey them. That's the reason why the prayers are not answered. That's what he's talking about here. But tonight, there is going to be a change. Your prayer will be answered in Jesus' name. You will get your portion. That thing you are in need of, God will give it to you. Okay, let's close up very quickly. I want to see how do we get this sorted out. Point number three. Possessing your inheritance in Christ. 
Which part do we use to go and possess our inheritance? Very easy, very simple. God so loved the world, we all know it. He gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But the person will have everlasting life. Now listen to what we are told in the book of James. And, and we want to sort out the problem. In James chapter 4, look at verse 2. James chapter 4, in verse 2, he said, Ye lost and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, ye have not because ye ask not. Mukupa ni muchita kaduka ndipo simkosa kupesa mulimbana ni muchita ngondo mulipe kantu chifukwa simpempa He says in verse 3 ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss Ndi mupempa ndipo simula ndia popesa mupempa so, if you are desiring something, and God has every good thing available for you, you are desiring something from the Lord. The reason why you don't have is because you ask not. Then he says, if you ask and you didn't receive, it's because you are asking wrongly. That's why in First John in chapter 5, he says, if we ask anything according to his will, he said, God will hear us. That's verse 14 and 15. If, and he said, if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the inheritance. The thing we are asking for, we will receive it. So if you are asking wrong, and for the wrong things. God is not going to hear you. He will not answer. So all we need to do is, we must ask, we will receive, but we should ask for the right things. There are some people who pray they want their enemy to die and want him to die. No, this is not the time when God is killing people. It's not yet killing people. This is the time of grace. Pray for your enemies. So people pray at the place of work they are having challenge. I want this boss of mine to be fired so that I will be promoted to his position. That's not a good prayer. If they fire your boss, how is he going to feed his family? How will he take care of his expenses? So that prayer is wrong prayer. You don't pray for somebody to die because you want to be promoted. So those are the things that make people not to get their inheritance. Why are you in need of what you are asking for? Why are you asking for it? In Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 he said ask it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Funani, muzapesa. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Gogodani, chizase kutuwa kwa inu. Now this next verse, I'm interested in it. Indime, ili yoni kutuwa yesa ine. He said, verse 8, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. Pandime ya 8, ali yesa waku pempa, alandira. He that seeketh, findeth. Ie ya waku pempa. Funa funa apeza. He that knocketh, it shall be opened unto him. Iye waku gogoda, chizase gulidwa kwa iye. Everyone that asketh receive. Adi ese waku pempa, apasidwa. That includes you. Izi zipatiki zapo inu. Tell your neighbor that's talking about me. Uzani muni nae pafu pikuti izintanga. Say it aloud. That is talking about me. Because this night you are going to receive in Jesus. 
Jesus name Everyone that asketh receive Everyone that seeketh will find So the question I have for you is what are you asking for? Because you are going to receive. Everyone that has get to receive it. Anyone who is going to ask this night, he will receive in Jesus' name. If you then being evil, he says in verse 11, if you then be evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father, your heavenly father, give good things to them that ask him? Pandime ya leven chomwe chongati, numuli woipa, muzi wakupasa ananu, paso sapu ino kopamba na kota ni nanga, atatewa anu wakumamba, asapasa zintu sapu ino, kwa iwo, akumupempa. So, the, a lot of people do not have because they do not have. Antu ambiri, alibe chifuka sapempa. The moment you are prayerless, you are not able to ask from God, it becomes a problem. Ngati, ndiwe mtu osa pempera, kumupempa murungu, ika na vuto. Now, in John chapter 16, so, panu muyohani, mtu wa 16, we are reading verse 20, he said, He that or have ye ask nothing in my name, ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Ask you will receive. So that your joy will be full. What is it that is making you not to have fullness of joy? You are not married. God will provide you a life partner. You are married and there is no child. God is able to reverse all the problems. And give you the children you are in need of in Jesus' name. Now, Sometimes when people live with a problem for a long time, that, that's the way it is. I'll have to die with this. Some people have sickness like that. And for a long time, because they have suffered in that sickness, they just accept that where well, there's nothing I can do about it. I prayed, I prayed, no answer has come. You, you will get your portion in Jesus' name. Our uh, outreach chair, chairman was with us. We were in Luapula. And that, that was specifically in Samfia. And this man came with the wife from Chirubi Island. In that, that place, he had a withered hand. He couldn't and move the hand. And uh, so he had uh, people were making noise using vehicles, saying there is a, a man of God is coming, he's having a crusade, and uh, you come, you will be healed, and so forth. So they came to Chirubi Island to Samfia. And he had a, a withered hand. So we, by the grace of God, we prayed. It was like a joke. The hand just got loosened. He was able to raise the hand up, down, up, down. And they were surprised himself. The wife was also surprised. But I wasn't surprised. Because I was expecting a miracle. So when we finished, and uh, we were about going to Mansa. So he came, he saw our outreach chairman. <laughs> he said, I want prayer. Ah, what prayer do you want? You nah. received the miracle. What ah, prayer again? He was afraid that if he goes back to Chirubi Island, the thing will come back again. So, he said, I want 
prayer so that this thing doesn't come back again. <laughs> he told me, he said, you don't need any prayer. <laughs> you have received your healing. Go, your healing is permanent. Your portion you are receiving this night is permanent in Jesus' name. No devil will take it away from you. The destroyer has been destroyed already. Jesus Christ destroyed him. Yes, and defeated him on the cross of and Calvary. To open Calvary. the door for you to receive your inheritance. You had the testimony he gave us about that particular woman. Mrs. I never forget that woman. Because the way the thing happened, it was as if it was a joke. And when she was giving the testimony, it's like she was making us to understand. You people, you don't understand what God has done for me. Said, you ask my husband, my husband is there. He, he knows the magnitude of this problem. My mother is there. Ask her, she knows the matter. The woman was filled with excitement. Just like you are going to be filled with excitement. God will do something definite for you. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary to destroy him who has the power of death. He is not going to die in vain on your behalf. He has suffered for you. You cannot keep on suffering anymore. So Jesus has given us a name. He said, you ask anything in my name, you will receive so that your joy will be full. Your joy will be full this night in Jesus' name. Are you ready? Are you ready to get your own portion? I told you the thing that prevents us from getting our portion. It is sin. Once we deal with sin, we get rid of sin. Jesus Christ comes into our lives. That's it, the door is open. And if you receive Jesus Christ already, your inheritance is available for you. And you will get your portion this night in Jesus' name. Are you ready? We are going to pray now. Nyamukani, nyamukani, nyamukani. Time to get your portion has come. And we are going to pray. Number one prayer. For those who want to give their lives to Jesus Christ. So that the problem of sin is taken out of the way. And then we'll get ready to get our portion. Where are you? You want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. If the devil has caged you in sin, sin of immorality, sin of telling lies, sin of witchcraft, Witchcraft, sin of drunkenness, the sin of smoking, you are in the bondage. You can't free yourself. If you are there and you want to surrender to Christ so that he will take away sin from your life. I want you to put up your hands. I'm going to pray with you now. Are there people like that? Put up your hand. Wherever you are, put up your hand. We are going to pray together. Any more before we pray? Any more before we pray? You want to give your life to Jesus Christ? Put your hands up wherever you are. God bless you. God bless you. Any more? We are going to pray soon. Those who are putting up their hands, please come forward. Come forward. Come forward. 
Don't be ashamed. Jesus Christ wants you. Come forward. Take steps and come forward. I'm Take going to pray with you here. Here. Come to me at the front here. All those who are putting up their hands, come forward. Even if you didn't put up your hand, but you know you need Jesus, come forward. The Lord is waiting for you, come forward. All those who are talking to you, come forward. Come forward. Don't allow the devil to stop you. Don't allow him to stop you. This is your own opportunity. To get your inheritance. Come forward. Those of you at the back who are putting up your hands, come forward. Take steps and come forward. Where you are, I'm waiting for you. Come forward. Come forward, come forward. I'm waiting for you. Where are you? Come forward. Including those of you at the far back. The Lord is waiting for you. You were putting up your hands. Come forward. I'm waiting for you. Come and join the others. Come forward. Come forward. Don't be ashamed. When Jesus died on the cross, he wasn't ashamed. He died for you on the cross. He wants to set you free from sin. Don't hesitate. Come forward boldly. And come and receive that Jesus who died for you. Come forward, come forward, come forward. He's waiting for you. He wants to change change your life. And it's going to remove the power of sin from your life. It wants to make you a new person. Change you completely. Don't stay back there. Come forward. The others are in front here. Come and join them. We ourselves, we made decision like that on one day. Come and give your life to Jesus. And it's going to change your lot in life. Any more? Okay, we want to pray now. Those of you at the front, I want you to close your eyes. And you are going to talk to God. You will tell him to have mercy on you that he should forgive your sins. Tell him, oh Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me my sins. I repent of my sins. Have mercy on me. Tell him, O oh Lord, forgive me my sins. I give my life to Jesus now. Tell him, O oh Lord, I surrender my life to you. Forgive all my past sins. Change my life. Make me a new person. Tell him like that. Make me a new person. Tell him, Lord, forgive all my sins. Change my life. And he's doing it now. Jesus died for you. Yes, anakuferani. And he died because of your sins and my sins. Adafa chifukwa cha uchimo wanu. And you receive him, things are not going to be the same again. You will change your life. Mukamuna zintu, sakana chimozi mozi. Tell him, oh Lord, I am sorry. Muse ni yesu, ni pepe sama chimo wanga. I sinned against you, forgive me. Na kuchimu irani ni kururu kireni. I now receive Jesus as my savior. Ni mula ntea yesu kisu kada mpulumusi wanga. In Jesus name we pray. Muzi nara yesu tapempera. I want you to put up your hands as we pray now. Nifuna muimikisa sanjara mpane tapempera. Almighty God I bring this precious souls unto you. Mulungu wampa mvionse ni pwesa miyo ya mtengo wapa tari kwa ilu. Lord I'm asking. As they've come forward here to receive Jesus as their Savior, 
mwezi wao. Lord, you died for them on the cross. Aambie mnao athira kwa mtanda wa Kavan. Like you died for all of us. Mnao tifera tose ife. Forgive all their sins. Akurukireni machimo yao. Wash them with the blood of Jesus. Asambi sana ni mwezi wa Yesu. Make them new creatures. Ayese nukara wale ngadwa sopano. Receive them into your kingdom. Arantireni mfumu wanu. Change their lives. Sintani mnyo yao. Holy Spirit of the living God. Mzimu wa wa mungu wa moyo. Take over their lives now. Tenga nura mnyo yao. Let their sins be washed away. Dekani machimo yao asambi sidwe. Make them part of the body of Christ. Ayese nukara mbari yatu pirakini sidwe. Give them the grace to go and sin no more. Apase nchisomu utasakachimu yao. All those power of iniquity. Pamfu so sampuru puru. I cancel it from their lives in Jesus' name. Nisi fafaniza mnyo yao mtina na yesu. Lord, I pray that you receive them as your own. Nipe mpe hautu marante ya ngati anu. Thank you because I believe you, Vasa. Ziko machifuka nisi zaanti mwayanka. I cast out every demonic force that has been holding them in captivity to sin. Lord, I pray right now all those prison doors in their lives. Let it be open now in Jesus' name. And let them be free and free indeed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, there are some people around there. They will talk to you. We we'll get your details because we want to keep on praying for you and see how best to help you. Because I'm coming to pray for you to be healed, whatsoever the problem might be, you are receiving your portion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give a clap offering for these special people who have surrendered their lives to Jesus. Heaven is happy. Heaven is rejoicing. Angels are happy. Even for those of you who gave your lives to the Lord yesterday and the other day. The angels are happy. I'll call upon uh, my coordinating and uh, moderating pastor here so that he can tell us the number of churches and locations where you can find Deeper Life Bible Church in the land of Lusaka. Okay, so this is Deeper Life Bible Church. In the by Deeper Life Bible Church. We have uh, locations all over Lusaka. Here in uh, Bauleni, we have some brethren that are in Bauleni. We have a branch at uh, Woodlands. And uh, you are welcome. Tomorrow we have... Uh, Combined service there for those that are in Woodlands. Those from Woodlands are meeting in uh, Woodlands. We, are, we also have a church in Munali. In Munali, we also meet there. We also have a church in uh, Kanyama. Kanyama John Lang, there we also have a church. We meet at Masauko Market. Just near that market, as for deeper life, you find us there. We have another location, another group that is Kamwala. That's the headquarters church. Just behind Kamwala Secondary School. That's where we meet. And you are most welcome to attend. We also have another group that is in Chawama. Under Chawama, we have Chawama men just near Chimome Primary. We also have another branch in Jack. 
You have another branch in Milai and also another group that is Kabanana Group. And uh, they meet there, there's a place we call campsite. We have a location there. We also have uh, some locations in Chongwe. We also meet there. We have some locations in uh, as far as Chipongwe, that's the target as we are going to Kafue. We are there. Ten miles, we are also there. Ten miles, we also meet there. So you can see that we meet everywhere. Those convents you have given your life to Jesus, the correct number. We'll be contacting you so that we help you in this journey that you have started today. Let's do it quickly. Get the name. Give us the correct phone number. Let's do it quickly. Full name. Make sure that the phone number is correct. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that very quickly. I want to remind you, as we are summarizing on the counseling there, Mrs. Kapembwa said she identified a problem, it was fibros. And then she went to see the pastor, this is my problem. And the pastor prayed for her. Oh my God, the fibros disappeared. Lo and behold, conception. You saw those four children, huh? God performed the wonder. And today is doing it. So what we are going to do now, I want you to identify your problem. This one is everyone, huh? The new people that have been invited, all those old members in the church, I want you to identify your problem so that as the man of God is going to pray, you know he's praying for this problem. And when it is gone, you know it is gone. And then you come over here to testify. Let's quickly finish the counseling. The rest of us at the back, I want you to stand together now. Pray a prayer that you have never prayed. Today, like the prayer of Hannah, you are saying, God, I'm here. This is my problem. Mention that problem. Problem. And then the man of God will pray for you. Pray, pray, pray. As I welcome the chairman to call on the pastor to come and pray. Shout and say, Miracle! I'm not hearing you. Shout and say, Miracle! It's coming upon you tonight. You shall be healed tonight. You shall be delivered tonight. If you are looking for a job, the business, as the man of God will pray, that business, that job will run after you in Jesus' name. Now listen to me before I call upon the man of God. The way God works is not the way you are thinking. We have been seeing signs, wonders, and miracles. As the man of God is going to pray, he will direct you to touch where you feel the pain or where the problem, or maybe it's in the stomach, in the head, anywhere. You know your problem. Once he says, Amen. Amen. We expect you to check. Don't, don't imagine. We expect you to check where the pain was. Feel it. 
The moment to discover that problem is not there. Don't wait and say, first let me go home. Tomorrow I'll come back and I'll come and say, no, don't do that. Right where you are standing. Shout hallelujah. As long as you feel something has happened, shout hallelujah. Then our choir and our ushers, please go to that place and check the person. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say amen. amen. You are going to shout hallelujah. Now get ready for your healing, for your miracle, for your supernatural wonder. Welcome the man of God to come and minister. You're welcome, sir. Hallelujah. 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 Get ready to get your portion. Your healing. Your business. Your provision. Your prosperity. Your promotion. Open the door for you. There is inheritance that is in Christ for you. So, having come to Christ, Whatever they need may be, you are getting your portion at this moment. So, as we pray, what I want to ask you to do is, what do you want from God? That's what you must tell him now. You are going to tell God what you want from him. Those who are sick, if you are sick, put up your hands. I want to see. You are sick. There's a sickness in your body. You know it. And you can identify it. Put up your hand. Now, I want you to expect a healing to take place now. I'm aware of the fact that some people, the healing will eventually manifest or they will notice it later on, tomorrow, next day. But tonight, you are going to get your own healing. You may have somebody who is sick at home. You can also put up a hand for that Distance is no barrier to the Almighty God. And God is going to touch that person. God is going to touch you now. So, put up one hand. Put the other hand where you are having that problem or the pain. If you can touch the place, just put the hand there, put the other hand up. The power of God is going to move upon your body now. And that sickness will be taken away. That problem will be taken away. That swelling will be taken away. Because we are going to pray in the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Are you ready? Close your eyes. Let's pray. Almighty God will come to you. Thank you because you are the ancient of days. Thank you because you love us so much. You've made the inheritance available for us. Provisions have been made available. The destroyer has been destroyed. And Jesus has come to set us free. Set us free from sickness. Set us free from diseases. Set us free from infirmities. Set us free from problems. Oh Lord, I pray at this particular time for everyone, all those who are putting up their hands, either for themselves or for their loved ones, they are standing in proxy for other people. Or they are right here for themselves. You know their problems and their challenges. God Almighty, be gracious and merciful unto them. 
I pray you will heal every sickness in Jesus' name. Remove every infirmity in Jesus' name. Remove every pain in Jesus' name. All those problems in the body, those who are having other problems, caused by the destroyer, the devil. All of those problems, I command them to be removed in Jesus' name. Every spirit of infirmity, you spirit of witchcraft, I bind you right now. I cast you out. I command you to depart in Jesus' name. All those powers of darkness, oppressing people, hindering their progress, I take authority over you now. I cast you out. Depart in Jesus' name. Any demon spirit sitting on the inheritance of anybody here, I command you to go out in Jesus' name. Receive your inheritance in Jesus' name. Possess your possession in Jesus' name. Get your own portion of the provision in Jesus' name. Those people who have labored, you have worked. At this time for you to receive your inheritance, your benefit, and somebody is hiding the file. I command that file to surface in Jesus' name. Every demonic power operating in the lives of those people. I bind you evil spirit. Spirit of corruption. I bind you right now. Go out in Jesus name. And you go from here. Go and receive your portion in Jesus name. Your portion has been set free in Jesus name. I pray for everyone. Your promotion. Somebody is saying, as long as I'm here, you will not be promoted. Today, I command that person to get out of that place in Jesus' name. Receive your promotion in Jesus' name. Every provision that is meant for you, receive it in Jesus' name. Now, I come again against every pain in the body. Objects moving up and down. Go out in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis, go out in Jesus' name. Asthma, be healed in Jesus' name. Diabetic, be healed in Jesus' name. Glucoma, be removed from the eye in Jesus' name. That impediment in the ear, be removed in Jesus' name. All the deafness represented, be removed in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm praying. Any without hand or stroke, in any part of the body, paralyzed, I command the power of God to come upon that body. Quicken the body, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be set free in Jesus' name. All those stomach problems, the rumbling in the stomach, on the authority of the name of Jesus, I command that rumbling to stop in Jesus' name. Pain in the stomach be removed in Jesus' name. Liver problem be healed in Jesus' name. Kidney problem be healed in Jesus' name. Every infirmity, every sickness, every disease, be removed in Jesus' name. Problem in the head, pain in the head, pain in the neck. Be removed in Jesus' name.
name. Back pain be removed in Jesus' name. Back pain in the leg be removed in Jesus' name. Receive your healing right now. Receive your healing right now. All the provision you are in need of, break through in your life and in your academics. Receive your portion in Jesus' name. Be set free in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you will touch everyone. All those who are having challenges, manifest your power in their lives now. Manifest your power in their lives now. Set them free in Jesus' name. Set them free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It is done. The foy broid. I command you to dry up in Jesus' name. Be removed in Jesus' name. Any cyst in any part of the body. Be removed in Jesus' name. On the authority of the name of Jesus. All the problems represented here. Barrenness, I command you, go out in Jesus' name. All the spirit of impotency, go out in Jesus' name. On the authority of the name of Jesus, let the power of God touch you right now, quicken you, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you set free every captive. Deliver every oppressed person. Set them free, O God. Let your power come upon them. Perform a miracle in Jesus' name. Those who are far away, wherever they may be, Lord, we call upon you. Release your power upon their body. Heal them in Jesus' name. Heal them in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you because it is done. We praise your name. We praise you, God. We worship you because you have done it. So you be all the glory, O Lord. Receive thanks and praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, time for you to check up yourself. Check yourself. Let's give a clap offering to Jesus. Clap offering to Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, miracles have happened. The Lord has touched you. As the man of God has prayed, check yourself confidently. Just check where that pain was. That problem, the Lord has taken it away. I want to hear that, hallelujah. Where God has touched you. We want to hear you. Yes, I want to hear you. Shout. Where are you? Just check yourself. We are waiting for you. The spirit of God has moved. The power of God has moved. Healing has come upon you. I'm waiting to hear that hallelujah. Yes, let's check ourselves. Yes. If God has touched you, you can lift up because I can't see you. If you shout hallelujah, I can hear you. Yes. Manifest that faith. Yes, I'm waiting. The singers will be singing, waiting for you to check yourself. Yesterday you were here. God touched you. You can come where the choir is sitting there. Hallelujah. We are still waiting for you. The Lord has touched you. Oh, so the singers, first, just a moment, just a moment, just a moment. Yes, do we have anyone? Because we want you to come where the choir are seated there. If God has touched you right now, where you are, let's shame the devil by testifying what the Lord has done for you. As they are singing, 
We want to see you coming. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Okay, you can sing. We're waiting for you. Check yourself. We are waiting for you. Some ushers, can we go around? Because uh, sometimes people are timid to say what the Lord has done for them. So, in case the Lord has touched you, yes, our choir, we are feeling cold, we are seated. Can we go around and just check in case there's somebody the Lord has touched them? Sometimes people are so timid, they are so scared. Yes, as they are singing, wherever you are, the man of God has prayed for you. You have felt that difference in your body. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. And then they will attend to you. Then we give you a chance to say what the Lord has done. You need to testify to the glory of God. Yes, our singers, you can sing. So morning. The Lord is doing it. Check yourself. Check yourself. There's a miracle for you. a miracle. Don't be ashamed. Tomorrow we are here again. If you fail to testify today, tomorrow come and testify. But before we go, let's hear what God has done. Let's hear what God has done.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord has done it again. We want to listen to a testimony. Our sister will give us the name where she's coming from and briefly what God has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. My name is Mwiz Chalata. I came from Matero. Um, while I was seated over there, I was, I was experiencing some uh, low abdominal pains on the left side. And um, on my own, I was thinking, uh, maybe it's because of the operation that I had and because of the cords, maybe that's why I'm feeling the pain. Then the time the man of God was praying for us and said, touch wherever you are feeling the pain, I touched on this part. And the moment the prayers were done, I felt so relieved and I wasn't feeling the pain anymore. Amen. 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 Uh, I believe this is one of the testimonies and I'll give more to her. Wonderful. Let's give the Lord a mighty clap. You can imagine all the way from Matero and Bauleni, we have not listened to your testimony. I believe even from Bauleni there should be testimonies. Let's give the Lord a mighty clap offering. Wonderful. Pain after operation as the man of God has prayed, pain disappeared and my sister you are healed in Jesus name. Let's listen to another testimony. Praise the Lord. Um, my name is Jessica Nkata. I'm from Arakan. I'm a member of Deeper Life. I just want to thank God for what he has done to my dad. The, the day before like, the crusade started, my dad became very sick, and we took him to the hospital at 23. Then the day when the crusade started, my mom listened to the message over YouTube. Then yesterday, my dad was re released at 20, and I thank God that he was released and he's healed. Hallelujah! The man of God, when he was praying, before he prayed, he said, The prayer is going to pray knows no distance. Hallelujah! Amen. And even now, he prayed, even today, that even if the patient is not here, wherever that person is, healing has gone to them. Hallelujah! Amen. We see the father was in the hospital, healed, discharged in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Yes, we are waiting for more. God has touched you as they are singing. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much, choir, in the interest of time. Let's stand together. We want to return the glory to God for what he has done. Let's magnify our God for the testimonies that we have listened to. Let's pray together briefly. We are not taking time. Let's thank God for how God used the man servant. Let's magnify his holy name. The people that God brought in here. Let's give God the glory and the honor. We must be thankful to God. God has done it again.
regardless of the weather the people have come in Jesus name we pray Lord we are grateful we are thankful for what you have done today thank you Lord for the miracles that you have performed we are praying that the miracles will be permanent in Jesus name we commit tomorrow the last day oh God in your hands that you do exploits oh God much more in this particular place the blood of Jesus will cover your people as they are getting back home in Jesus name we pray ok for our Sunday service tomorrow we are going to meet in our groups. But we must connect live. We're going to have uh, the alpha location at Woodlands. And then all of us must uh, uh, join in live. That's the very important announcement. And immediately you finish your Sunday service. Please, you need to do your house caring fellowship so that in the evening you find time to come here. We'll be starting at 16 hours. Thank you so much. God bless you. You are free to go. Praise the Lord. Please note all those from Baulen here there will be a bus at 8.30. So if you, you want to attend the service, there will be a bus to take us to the church location 8.30. At once, I can go about and it is in the kilo to Kuzaka and it will be bus. You are taking my lopa and how you are 8.30. Go to Kudlanzi. Don't miss out. 8.30, there will be a bus right at this ground. Musaka Pony, 8.30, it will be bus here. Zaka Pezeka for Malo and I'm going to go song and an apple. If you want to attend the service, 8.30, there will be a bus and it will take us to the church location. God bless you.